Hi everybody and welcome back once again to John's Rockin' Vinyl 77. This time around, I have some more really cool finds to show you guys. And uh, some of the earlier stuff, like like I usually do, kind of gets better as it goes on. So I'm just gonna kind of, kind of get started and show you guys what I got. It's been it hasn't been that long since I last made a video, but I thought I'd go ahead and make one since I have a good little stack of about 20, 22 records. So um, I'm gonna show you guys what I found, and towards the end, there's some like really cool grill type items and stuff that I actually got for a really good price and um, I'm glad to share with you guys what I found so uh, without further ado let's get started right so first off like I said we're gonna start with some of the more common kind of records this is a band called the Rockets our Rockets um, yeah and uh, I've had uh, their third album no ballads this is their second album I believe it's called, what was it called? It is called Turn Up the Radio. And it's just kind of like straight up rock and roll from the late 70s. It's a little bit polished, uh, but it's still like pretty straight up rock and roll. So I think that people would really dig this. This is the one that has their, their cover of Oh Well, um, which was Peter Greenfleet with Mac. You know, that was one of their big hits. So it's, and it's a good, it's a good version of it too, so, yeah. Okay, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, I like the cover, it's got a good, uh, good kind of classic looking cover, so it's pretty cool. And of course it has Jim McCarty on guitars from, um, Cactus. I love Cactus. This channel definitely gets a lot of cactus, so, uh, yeah, so I thought that was a cool find. And then, uh, I found Rabbit. These guys are like a Canadian kind of commercial, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't even want to say commercial, because there's, there's a, a little bit of a metallic edge to them. There's a little bit of that, I don't, I don't even know how to describe it. Um, the vocalist kind of reminds me a little bit of Jeff Tate from Queensryche. A little bit, not a lot. He's kind of, I don't know why, it's kind of that kind of operatic kind of vocal that I really, I really like it. And it's really, I, I don't know, it's a, it's a good, it's a good vocal. This band is pretty underrated, I'm guessing. They're a Canadian band. I don't know how many albums they made, but I know they didn't make a whole lot of them. On MCA Records, custom labels and stuff. I found this on vacation in Florida, so for a dollar. So I grabbed it, and it's very good actually. It's you know definitely a keeper, definitely something that's right up my alley. Then we have Blood Rock. Of course, I have one of these. I have a, I actually have a really nice copy of this, so this will probably be getting uh, passed along at some point. We have original green label. Blood Rock original. Gotta find a way, of course. Great starter, great opening song. Very like wild, hard, heavy, kind of psychedelic, I guess, in a way. Very grinding organ, you know. Then we have Ken Hensley, Proud Words on a Dusty Shelf, Shelf, which is a pretty cool find for me. I. I've always wanted this album, but they're usually like a lot more than I want to pay for it. So I found this for a dollar, really cheap, locally, and I grabbed it. The covers are really nice. The record's not real great, but but I got it anyway because you don't see uh, it's it's a hole in my kind of Uriah Heap collection, so I kind of needed it anyway. And I think it's a, like a it's kind of a, a different pressing, so I thought it was. Pretty cool. I thought I'd grab it since I saw it really cheap. And if I see the vinyl and a cover in really bad condition, you know, I'll swap it out. I don't have one really good copy. So I thought it was worth grabbing for a dollar. Just out and about. Then we have Angel, White Hot. And this is probably their most famous album. I would say. 
this is a this is actually a really solid kind of glam rock, uh, progressive rock. They're kind of like in between. They're kind of glam rock, progressive, hard rock. They got all the the seventies rock elements, which is really cool. And uh, they're kind of ahead of their time because they're kind of a hair band before hair bands w were a thing, you know. So, so definitely a really cool uh, grab. It has the original inner insert or inner sleeve. I thought it was odd because it actually had the Aerosmith Rocks inner sleeve. It's pretty weird. But I'll show you guys what it looks like. Maybe. You know, Casablanca classic. Classic label. White Hot. And I believe this is a first edition of this. I don't see Angel Records a lot, so when I do, and they're a good price, I always pick them up. I just thought it was odd that it had that that Aerosmith rocks in her sleeve. Okay, up next, I have Vanilla Fudge, first album. I've had one of these before, but I got another one I needed it, so. It's original. On the uh, two tone echo label, pretty cool. It's not, it's not perfect. It's not bad for what it is. So, I mean the, I mean everybody knows this album. This album is freaking phenomenal. So, yes, I mean if you don't know this, this is like essential. So, uh, what else we got? I found every one of the the Joe Lynn Turner uh, Rainbow albums. I found Difficult to Cure. And all for a dollar, believe it or not. In this protector, sleeve on Polydor. Yeah, really cool. I'm, I'm really happy to find these because I just recently found. Um, what is it called? God Almighty! It's going to take. It's going to kill me if I don't think of it. Straight between the eyes. Which is a great freaking, it's a great album, I love that album. And I found another copy of it. So, I found, it, the cover's rougher, but the vinyl's still nice. And then I found, uh, Bent Out of Shape. Which is on Mercury. On that transitional label. Really nice copy of that. Pretty pretty hard to find. I mean, not, it's not that hard to find, but you know, you know what I'm saying, man. This was probably their their weakest album with the Joe Lynn Turner to me. It's it's pretty commercial. It's not like, you know, it's not as hard rock as their other releases. And then, of course, I got some Ronnie James Dio albums from, you know, from the Rainbow era from the same place for a dollar. And here's Rainbow Rising. Of course, I have a copy of this, but uh, I'm still looking for an original on Oyster. This is just like the copy I had, pretty much. I have, so I'm gonna find an Oyster one one day for a good price. It's not thirty dollars, you know. And then I got Long Live Rock and Roll, which is a great freaking album. I love this album. Um, it's not as good as Rising to me, but it's still really good. But uh, this is an original, original copy on that kind of slick cover. I, don't, I believe this was not released as a. Uh, this wasn't released as a um, gatefold. So yeah, long live rock and roll. Gotta love it. Great. And a great opener, Kill the King on here, you know. Gotta, gotta love. This was the last one with Ronnie James Dio on vocals. So, kind of a, a milestone, you know. 
I have a lot of the Rainbow albums now, so... Because I found all these at the same place. So yeah, Long Live Rock and Roll. Very happy to add that to the collection. Then I have this po Poco Harum. A Salty Dog. And the thing that's special about this album... It's, it's one of the... When I was a kid... I had this on cassette, a Salty Dog, and I used to love, like, listening to this on cassette, so I'm glad that I finally found a copy of it. Check this out. It's an original pressing, and it's a Monarch pressing from the Monarch. Look at that label. Look how pretty that is. And it's in perfect condition. It's, like, never been played. So that's why I had to grab it. I mean... Monarch copies of this are like 15 or 20 bucks. I got it for like three dollars or something, so can't complain. I cannot complain. Very happy to add that to the collection. Pretty pretty tough to find. And our, I remember how in the last episode I was, or one of my last episodes, I was talking about how I was needing. I was almost done with my Savoy Brown collection, and I was still looking for raw sienna. There you are, raw sienna. I found one. So, I found one on vacation at a record shop I went to. Um, five bucks, you know. I had to get it. I couldn't, wasn't going to leave it behind for five bucks. So, and it's a really nice copy, really clean. VG plus plus, excellent condition. Really great, and it's original. And it's probably their their finest album to me. It's really good. It's a really good album. I think I'm only missing like two other releases now. So, so yeah, pretty cool. Glad to have that in the collection. Here's another really cool find for me. Ambrosia. I had a I had a decent copy. Actually, I had, the cover was kind of shredded. And the record was a bit on the rougher end. And I've always been wanting an upgrade of, of the Ambrosia album. And then all of a sudden I find this. And it's an original, of course, with the original artwork. And it's just in really... Like, the covers don't have a lot of ring wear on it. It's got some edge, some seam wear, which is kind of typical. These usually do. So, but no, but no seam splits or anything. But the cover's really nice. And then an added bonus. Came with the original lyric insert. Which I've never seen before, which is really cool. I'm glad that that, that was in there. And then, of course, on the 20th Century Fox label. Very cool. Love this album. This is a phenomenal album. If you guys don't know about this album, you guys need to know about it. It's really good. Put it back. I'm really happy to add this to my collection, of course. A really nice copy of it. And then this is really epic. I'm really glad I found this. My dad gifted me a copy of this not long ago. And uh, I've always wanted a first press US edition of this, your I Heap album. And then I walked into a record shop and I was like, it can't be an original, I know it can't be. And I pull out the label. There it is. First edition, no bronze label stuff on it. The, I, I don't know how many Mercury dots that is, but it's like 12 or something, I think. But that's how you know it's an original, so really glad to, to have that to the collection. 
The only thing that is missing is the original insert that has like the UK artwork on it, so the very heavy, very humble. I was missing that. I believe it's like a, the other side has a lyric. It's lyrics, so. But yeah, I'm glad to have an original pressing of this finally. And it, the cover's pretty pretty solid. It's got a little bit of wear at the top, but it's pretty pretty great. And now this is another exciting find from the same kind of. I got it from the same place. Wonder World. It looks like just a normal copy of Wonder World. But it's actually an original UK pressing on bronze records. An original UK pressing on bronze records with the original inner insert or inner sleeve. And I got this for so cheap. I got this for like under ten dollars for an original UK Wonder World. So that's I mean I know to import this it would cost probably thirty or 40 bucks, so glad to have that in the collection now. And now I'll send my uh, my old copy to someone, probably, probably to a friend. And now I got the, the UK, of course, gotta have that. And I'd like to find some more of the UK releases if I can. I might find some more. So, up next, I've got The Runaways, an original copy of this first edition of this I believe it's only missing the insert and I went ahead and got another one of these because the copy I had I was kind of disappointed with because when I got it I paid like 30 40 bucks for it on on eBay and the they never said that it had like a, a smoke stench to it so it it had like a stench to where like you know, people been smoking around it, so I didn't really like that. So I ended up finding a w like a way better copy for like ten dollars on eBay, like just recently. So, and it's like a really it's really good VG plus plus excellent condition. Really nice copy, really really nice, and it's original. So I'm glad to add that to the collection. Let's see where we're at with time. I'm glad that uh, that I was able to find a, a really nice copy of this. I mean, like every everything is an upgrade to my copy, so I'm really really happy to add that to the collection. Add a nice. Copy okay, everybody, to it. and we're back. Welcome back. Uh, I almost ran out of space on my uh, on the video, so I would have been filming and not had any footage. So. Um, I'm just gonna finish off the video just like this and um, I got four more albums and a few of them two of them are UK original pressings so uh, let's see here's the next one Savoy Brown looking in this is kind of verging on the Grell territory I mean not really but uh, finding a nice copy of this an original UK is very very hard and typically like a forty fifty dollar album you know something like that trying to import it and uh, it's just a I'll show you guys the, the cover because it's, it's pretty nice pretty solid cover it's not real beat up it's got some it's got a little bit of issues it's got some corner wear and stuff and it has the original uh, inner sleeve which was really jacked up and I just slid it in there and I put it in this new polylined jack sleeve that kind of resembles the original so I thought I'd just put it in there and it's a real nice kind of VG++ excellent condition and it's an original UK of course you gotta have, you know and I mean you just you just can't find this stuff man I mean it's really tough to find and I got a I got a bargain. I got a great price, so I'm highly, highly surprised to find that in that kind of condition. It's just so rare, so uncommon to find a good copy of that. So 
That's, I mean, that's verging on that grill territory. And we're getting closer to more exciting items, you know, so. This is one that I've been after for a while. And I've, I've always wanted, but I didn't want to pay a lot for it. And it's a band called Tucky Buzzard. They're a UK band. This is a US pressing, believe it or not. I don't know if it had a UK release. It might have. I'm not sure. But I want to say that it might have been a US only. I don't know. But this is their self-titled album. I'm not sure if it's their debut. or They might have had one before this. I'm not sure. In the UK, I don't know. But uh, it's kind of like progressive. It's got some progressive. It's got some bluesy elements. It's got some folky elements. It's like a, it's like a hodgepodge of like all kinds of British rock. There's some hard edge rock. There's, some, there's this one song that's got this really cool riff on it. And it's just like impeccable. It's sound. It, <laughs> speaking of impeccable, it reminded me of Budgie, a little bit like the artwork kind of, you know, because it's kind of like that stenciled cover, you know. Kind of made me think of Budgie when I originally saw it, and I was like, I'll give it a shot. Their second album is called Warm Slash which is also pretty good. It's a little more in the deep purple kind of vein. I would say Warm Slash is kind of deep purple-esque, you know. But uh, this one I, I probably prefer out of all their records. I don't know why. There's something that draws me to this record. The production I like. I like the sound. It's got a good sound. But yeah, it's an original U.S. pressing. I'll show sure you guys the label. Of course, got a single label. It's a really nice VG++ excellent condition copy. I'm very glad to add that to the collection. Definitely. Pretty tough to find. And I got a great deal on it. I got it for less than eight bucks on eBay, so... And the next three items are all eBay finds. So, this one was eBay, and the next two will be eBay. So, uh, I'm very happy with finding that. So, very awesome find. And then, uh, next, I have a really cool find. I've been looking for a really nice copy of this album for a long, long, long time. And I didn't want to get a crappy copy. I wanted to get a really good copy. And I wanted it to be a first press. And I've been looking and looking. And then I found one that popped up that was a Canadian seller. And I didn't know if it would be, if it was going to sell for a lot or not, so I just kept watching it. And then when it got time to bid, I bidded and nobody outbid me, and I was so shocked. And it's an original copy of Stray, the debut album by the, by the British underground rock band, Stray. It's an original first press on the, what is this label called? Transatlantic label, the Transatlantic label. Check this out. And it's like mint condition. It's a beautiful copy. And I got it for like forty-five dollars. So, really great copy. back cover. The only the only problem with it, I would say the worst thing on it is the like the uh, what is it? The spine area. Like all the way down down the spine is kind of cracked. So kind of popped up. And then on the 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 uh, stray name is all there except I mean, like, it's really all there, and it's not ripped up or anything, even in the, the really kind of fragile areas. But right here, it was flipped. It was like someone pulled it like that, probably, and ripped it. And uh, it just kind of has creases, so it's not too bad. But, the, but what was really important was the record being in really good condition, so the covers, the, the inner part's really nice with the live seen on it. And this fragile cover is like really solid honestly for for how usually beat up they, they look. 
And I, I recently saw like a second press of the same, a very similar copy and not, I don't even think it was in as good condition as, as the one that I have. And it sold for like $130 or something. If that sells for $130 and this is at least worth $150, $160. So I think I got a really good price on it and the condition it's in. Kind of original, so very glad to find that. And that's a, you know in that Grell territory like I was talking about, just like really hard to find stuff. And I'm just so shocked that I was able to find that. And that would have been the best thing that I found if it wasn't for just a couple of weeks ago when I came across this listing on eBay, where they didn't have the name of the album listed properly, and. I was I was shocked and I was like maybe they they don't know what it is and then I ended up winning it I was the last bidder I ended up getting it for less than twelve dollars for under for almost under ten dollars it was like ten dollars and some change and um, I was I was just shocked like I was I was so shocked that there was a copy of Dragonfly on here. An original, original copy, megaphone. Cover looks pretty solid. It's not too bad. It's got some edge wear on the spine. It's got a little bit of creasing and stuff, but it's not too bad. A little crease. A couple, of, uh, one more crease here. But they listed it wrong as the wrong album. And um, the the gatefold cover was flipped it was like flipped on the outside because the unipack cover so I don't know if they didn't know that it flipped over and that was the cover or what but they had it flipped the wrong way so it was just when you when you saw the listing all you could see was let's we'll see all you could see was this part because this part was like flipped all the way back around so so I'm very excited to add this to the collection. Freaking crazy killer, like, late 60s, hard-edged, blues rock, psychedelic rock album. So, and it's an original. Let's check out those labels, right? Gotta see those. Dragonfly. really nice VG plus I would say on the verge of excellent I, I'd say that side two is a little bit more VG plus than it is excellent but side one is about I would say side one's about excellent and side two is about VG plus so I think a really solid find for for under twelve dollars and it's like a when these things sell, they sell for upwards way over two hundred dollars usually. So, um, very happy to add that to the collection. And that was the crazy find, you know, of, of this episode. I was, I was just so, I was so shocked. I was, I was considering that. I mean, I would have got it if there was no cover. You know, I would have, I would, still would have paid ten dollars. It was just the the vinyl. Because it's that rare of an album, it's just so hard to find. And I thought that the cover might have been ripped off when I originally saw it. But when I got it, I, I kind of considered maybe they they had it flipped around, and then I got it, and I was like, wait a second, this is the this is the inside of the gatefold, and I flipped it around, and I was like, oh my god, it's the cover. So really cool find. Glad to add it to the collection. It's another one of those crazy finds and to know that there's still this kind of stuff out there in the wild well not in the wild but you know out there floating around for good prices uh, it's kind of uh, I guess inspiring in a way and kind of like it's promising you know it's not as I know I know it's really lucky that I that I was the one that that, that ended up with it because because there were other bidders but I just so happened to see it and was like, man, I gotta, I gotta get this. I gotta try to get this. And then uh, I did. So, uh, just an awesome find. And I hope you guys enjoyed my video this week. 
Uh, I don't know, I might have another update sometime soon. I don't know, we'll see how soon it'll be. Maybe it'll be a month, maybe it'll be a, a, little, bit of while, a little bit while between, I don't know. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed what I, what I showed, and um, see you guys next time. Bye.